Hello YouTubers, my name is Frederick Lopez, you are in a new episode of The Final Cut, and today I'm going to be going over my thoughts and review of the 2002 film, Queen of the Damned. It is a sequel to Interview the Vampire, but in a way it's a film that can stand on its own. It's also based upon the novel of the same name, Queen of the Damned. And while it's the third book in the Vampire Chronicles, it is the second movie, and they combine elements of both uh, the Vampire Lestat and uh, Queen of the Damned. So, uh, immediately, just to get it out in the open, it, this film is an inferior film slash sequel to Interview the Vampire. Uh, it has some of the same characters, but a totally different cast and crew, and in a way has much to do with Interview the Vampire, as Halloween 3 Season of the Witch has to do with the first two Halloween films. Uh, it's a film that can stand on its own. So quickly, I'm going to go over the synopsis, cast and crew, and then my thoughts in review of Queen of the Damned and whether or not I think this makes the final cut. So here we go. Queen of the Damned stars Aaliyah as Queen Akasha, Stuart Townsend as Lestat de Lincour, Margaret Mora as Jesse, Vincent Perez as Marius, Paul McGann as David Talbot, and Lena Olin as Maharet. It is directed by Michael Reimer. After many years of sleeping, the vampire Lestat awakens to find a world that has changed. And he decides, after being bored with his existence, that he now wants to become a part of it as this generation's new rock god. Meanwhile, another ancient vampire has arisen. Akasha, Queen of the Damned. Lestat wants immortal fame. Fellow vampires want him dead for his betrayal. And she, the Queen of the Damned, wants him for her king. But who will be the first to reach him? Who will win this final battle between the vampires? That is a question that is presented in Queen of the Damned. And uh, in addition to that, we have uh, Jesse, who is a Talamasca agent. The Talamasca is an organization that investigates everything of the paranormal and supernatural within the world. They observe, but they do not interfere. She gets a little bit too close and discovers that Lestat's uh, lyrics in his song have hidden messages to vampire places. And the vampires basically are upset about Lestat presenting himself to the world. Vampires are supposed to be secretive, and Lestat basically reveals that he is a vampire. You have people believe it, and then you have other people who are like, he's making it up. So they're not sure, but they want him dead. Now, Akasha doesn't arrive till the end, but she loves that Lestat is out in the open. She used to rule upon the earth in ancient Egypt. And uh, Jesse uh, discovers a journal that belonged to Lestat uh, through her mentor, David Talbot. And he's a Talamasca agent, and he's been investigating this vampire named Marius. Now, in the film, uh, Marius is a creator of Lestat, even though in the novels it was Magnus. But uh, you basically read his journal, and it's a story of Lestat, how Marius created him, how he became a vampire. And Marius looked after Inkle and Akasha, which were the king and queen of the damned, the mother and father of all vampires in this universe. And uh, Lestat one time was playing a violin, and uh, she liked the music, and he drank the blood of the queen of the damned, and it made him filled with rage. So he had to basically leave Lestat because uh, he was supposed to protect the king and queen, and uh, they were they're compromised. Uh, they were awoken. And Akasha kind of always had this bloodthirst, so you kind of get introduced to her character through the flashbacks of Lestat's journal. Afterwards, Jesse tries to find Lestat, and uh, you have all the different stories and all the vampires meeting for Lestat's concert, the one and only, which is going to take place in Death Valley. And there, the final battle between all the vampires take place. So without going into too many spoilers, that is pretty much uh, what Queen of the Damned is about. Uh, Jesse, as a character, also has a hidden past that's connected to the vampires uh, that you discover throughout the film. So yeah, Warner Brothers, over the course of time after Interview the Vampire, they are originally supposed to make sequels. Uh, vampire Lestat was the second one after Interview the Vampire, and then it was Queen of the Damned. Anyway, it wasn't until their last year of the rights that they decided to make the films, and instead of making Vampire Lestat, uh, they basically combined the both of them into one movie, which is a big mistake, and Anne Rice just said, hey, make the second one, that's what people want to see. They didn't listen to her, which is unfortunate, because I think it really affected this film. Um, and, uh, yeah, after seven years of doing nothing, they finally decided to make a sequel to Interview the Vampire. Uh, again, it doesn't have the same cast or crew, uh, but they did ask Tom Cruise to return as the Vampire Lestat. Uh, he declined, uh, which is probably because he read the script and saw where it was going. Uh, compared to the pre his predecessor. Uh, so upon that, they almost got Wes Bentley, but he dropped out, and they're kind of going through a few actors. 
They ended up getting Stuart Townsend, who was actually the original Aragorn in Lord of the Rings, but uh, after filming a bit, uh, they dropped him because he looked too young for the role. So he ended up being the vampire Lestat. And uh, for all intents and purposes, he actually does a pretty good job here. Uh, I just wish they gave him the blonde hair. It's just brown hair. But he kind of kind of he kind of has that kind of rock and just kind of aristocratic nature of Lestat. He's not as evil as Tom Cruise's Lestat, but it's also more through his eyes, so he's more the hero in this story compared to Interview the Vampire. But I think he does a fine job. Uh, and the other actors do a great job too. They end up getting Aaliyah. It's her second film. Uh, her first being Romeo Must Die with Jet Li, and she ended up being Akasha, Queen of the Damned. And unfortunately, after principal photography was finished, uh, uh, Aaliyah died in a plane crash, so this film is dedicated to her. And she couldn't finish the ADR work, so they got her brother to do some voices, and through technology made it sound a bit more feminine. So that's how you get that deep, menacing voice. But overall, I thought she gave a great performance from uh, what she was given. Um, Vincent Perez is actually a highlight of this film. He plays Marius. Uh, he is in Crow City of Angels, and it's nice seeing him in this role. Uh, I think he does an okay job as Marius. I kind of imagine Marius being like that when you read Vampire Lestat, Queen of the Damned, and, uh, and Pandora, and Blood and Gold. So, yeah. Anyways, production was moving along, and they combined the scripts, but they got Jonathan Davis from the band Corn to do the music. And I must say, you could tell that the soundtrack was all made with the songs before the movie was. Because the soundtrack is in fact a bit better, but I'll get to that later. Uh, then, um, Michael Reimer directed it, and they went into production. And they didn't get to finish everything. There's a lot of scenes that were deleted, and because of that, besides having a weaker script, I feel that it affected the film. There was a few plot holes, and it was just kind of like everywhere. It wasn't as... Uh, fluid as Interview the Vampire or Coherent, but it does have a linear story with Lestat. It's just that I feel like there's more to the film than what is given. Um, but upon that, the vampire effects were not as well uh, made as Stan Winston's, but to today's standards, after Twilight and some of the Underworld sequels and kind of and the Blade Trinity, uh, Queen of the Damned actually has some suitable vampire effects, even though sometimes the eyeshadow and everything look like it's Halloween costumes. They don't feel like real vampires. It does have some cool effects. Uh, Lestat gets to fly. There's some cool stuff there. Akasha, there's this one scene where uh, she's at the Admiral's Arms Club and she has, she burns all the vampires, kills them all, gets this guy's heart out, eats this guy's heart out who wants to kill Lestat. System uh, is playing. Uh, by Jonathan Davis, who Linkin Park uh, does in the soundtrack. Oh my god, Systems playing, it's just a great sequence. One of the best sequences in the film. And I just wish the film was filled more with that. I feel like they were going for these deeper storylines and they didn't get to fulfill them. Part of that is because Queen of the Damned, the novel, is really heavy with multiple stories. And they just had maybe a couple of pages of Vampire Lestat put in with like Queen of the Damned the novel, mixed it up and made their own story. And that's why I think this film suffers is they try to do too much and pack too much source material into this where it just becomes something else entirely. But uh, ultimately, uh, it's an okay movie. If you're a fan of Interview of the Vampire, you'd be surprised to know that there's a sequel and then there's a whole bunch of like book sequels. There's a sequel in the novels. Yeah, definitely check them out if you don't know. And then, uh, not many people know Queen of the Damned is related to Interview of the Vampire. They feel that much different. They're totally different from one another. They could also be two separate films, even though they are kind of technically in the same universe and have the same characters, even though there's different actors and cast and crew. Uh, but overall, Michael Reimer, I guess, uh, as a director and the writing, I feel like what they did is they just got the cliff notes and like chapter highlights from Wikipedia or just skimmed through the chapters, read a page each from Vampire Lestat and Queen of the Damned and then they said, okay, that's going to be the movie. And they didn't really fully read the book. That's what it feels like. It feels like they just skimmed through the chapter highlights and said, that's going to be in the movie, this is going to be the movie. Yeah, I reread the book. Or we're going to do it like the source material and put our own stuff in there. That's what it feels like, and there's just so much to the Anne Rice universe that they just kind of rushed in this film that they really could have taken their time with if they made the proper sequels with the original actors from Interview the Vampire. But on that note, uh, the film by itself, if you don't compare it to the novel, if you compare it to the novel and Interview the Vampire, it's kind of a disappointing abomination. But if you don't compare it to the novel, 
or the film Interview of the Vampire as a sequel, if you just look at Queen of the Damned on its own, it actually is an okay film. And in my personal opinion, I think it makes the final cut. It's not that much of a scary film, but it's an enjoyable, kind of guilty pleasure type of film. And uh, I think Stuart Townsend and Aaliyah do great jobs in this, and then most of all the soundtrack. But uh, if I had to give a final cut score, I would give it a 3 out of 5, a 7 out of 10, and a B. Queen of the Damned is just okay. It's not the worst film ever. It's not the best film. It's not as great as In Every the Vampire or the source material with the Vampire Chronicle novels. But I think it is an okay film to watch for Halloween, and uh, it's enjoyable on its own merits. Uh, but if you compare it to the novels or its predecessor, In Every the Vampire, you're going to be sorely disappointed. But on that note, this is 3 out of 5. Like I said, Jonathan Davis from Quarren did all the music, composed it, and they did it before the film, which you could tell because some of the music video portions are really cool within the film. It has like a Nosferatu vibe and then System with the Aaliyah scene, like I said earlier. But uh, yeah, Jonathan Davis wasn't on the soundtrack because of contract issues, and uh, I really wish he was. But uh, meanwhile, other bands like Lincoln Park, Orgy, and, and different groups uh, do uh, the songs that he sang. And uh, if I was, this is a totally different review, but Queen of the Dam, the album, get the explicit version that has like Disturbs Down with the Sickness and stuff, 5 out of 5, 10 out of 10, and an A+. Plus. Queen of the Dam, the soundtrack, is amazing. One of the best movie soundtracks ever made. And again, it supports the theory that great soundtracks often come from either bad or just mediocre films. And Queen of the Dam is no exception. This is an awesome soundtrack. And the soundtrack, in a way, makes this film more enjoyable. Uh, you have different parts with uh, Cold by Static X and Lestat's going after these two women. There's this cool sequence where he's climbing on the wall. Good practical effects there. Um, you have uh, uh, Jonathan Davis's kind of score with like uh, Redeemer and System playing at the beginning. Lestat awakens. It's like Tales from the Crypt. He just like wakes up. Um, down with the Sickness starts to play in the Death Valley concert. So you see like the flame things go in all the audience. That's great. Uh, oh yeah. Change in the House of Flies by the Deftones and that lovemaking scene between Akasha and Lestat is just one of like the hottest vampire scenes ever in cinema. Probably one of like that, that, that's probably going to be on everybody's sex playlist. That's all I'm going to say. It's a really great sequence between Aaliyah and Stuart Townsend there. And that's one danger of this film is that you have all these forces going after Lestat for being public, but then there's an ultimate question of like Lestat ruling with Akasha and whether or not he's going to stop her. Lestat, as his figure, can have all this power with her, and she's basically going to try to corrupt him to take over the world. And that's another element of this film that I find very interesting. And uh, the elements of being in secret versus being out in the open, the dangers of that. Uh, and again, uh, it's done in a subtle way, and it's not as, I guess, apparent as Interview the Vampire, but uh, it does bring the question of life and how fragile mortality is. And how being an immortal, you can start to understand the beauty of mortality. And that's one interesting question that's brought into this film, I must say. For it, Despite it being inferior to its predecessor in source material, it does have some deeper stuff lying within there. I just wish that they took more of a budget and time and, to make a more longer film. And maybe uh, production issues with them rushing for the rights factored into that Aaliyah's death. Uh, just many things just factored into it, and I feel like if you had another crew who just basically based it off the source material more closely and more accurately, and maybe actually have a sequel to Interview the Vampire, I feel like you would have had an amazing film with the music and everything. And it kind of kills me now after seeing Tom Cruise in Rock of Ages. Uh, he could have really played Vampire Lestat and, sa and sang all the songs, but... Uh, uh, Stuart Townsend, I think, plays a, a worthy Lestat. Uh, I just wish they gave him the blonde hair, but definitely some part of him uh, plays some elements of Lestat from the novels. And, uh, yeah, it's almost like Tom Cruise is perfect for a little while. Nobody's going to be better than Tom Cruise, but like Stuart Townsend played other attributes that you didn't see on film that the vampire Lestat has in the books. And I feel like uh, Tom Cruise and Stuart Townsend played... Uh, great portrayals of Lestat. They play different parts of him you see in the novels. And together probably make like a full version of Lestat that you see in the novels. Uh, but yeah, that is just my uh, quick score. Definitely the soundtrack's a 
perfect score all around. Get the soundtrack. This is the best damn soundtrack ever made. And then the film, it's not the worst vampire film. Uh, it's not that great. It's been a lot more uh, horrible and just far worse films in recent years. So yeah, check out Queen of the Damned. I give it a 3 out of 5, 7 out of 10, and a B. It makes the final cut, but it's not the greatest film. It doesn't get that much scares, but it does fit the genre of vampires. And uh, that does it for the vampire reviews this month for Halloween. Yeah, definitely check out Interview the Vampire, and then it's pseudo-sequel slash just follow-up Queen of the Damned. This is a better film, but they're both great films on their own merits, and uh, yeah, check them out for Halloween. Uh, but if you want the better film, check out Interview. This, where, this film is nowhere near it, but it does have some enjoyable moments, and again, like a guilty pleasure, uh, it's passable, and it's just okay. So yeah, it does make the final cut. That does it for this review. Uh, let me know, what did you think about Queen of the Damned? Did you hate it? I wouldn't blame you if you did. Uh, do you like it? Do you find it enjoyable? Uh, what do you like? The book? Film? Uh, what parts did you wish they had from the novels? Uh, what parts did you like? Uh, Stuart Townsend, who's your favorite Lestat? Um, yeah, just give me your, uh, your thoughts about Queen of the Damned and your favorite out of the two. Do you like both? I like everything vampire, so like even though this is nowhere near Interview of the Vampire or the novel Queen of the Damned and Vampire List at, it's enjoyable on its own. So let me know your thoughts, and uh, yeah, that does it for the vampire reviews. Look forward to more Final Cuts in which I review Scream 3, Scream 4, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street's from Freddy's Revenge all the way to Wes Craven's New Nightmare, and then we're going to have a grand finale of Halloween H2O. That does it. Uh, yeah, so come out, come out wherever you are and enjoy some Halloween films. That's it for the final cut.